You know, when I woke up this morning, I, I messaged our, um, our team. We have, a, we have a messaging thing that, that uh, we message on for different leaders. And, and I had Galatians 3 in my heart. And it says, he who supplies the spirit and works miracles among you. So this was, this was the Apostle Paul telling the church of Galatians as this is something that happens all the time. Meaning you, you see this all the time. The one that supplies the spirit and works miracles among you. So it, it should become... It, it, the supernatural, the things of God should be normal. Because it was almost like, hey, this is happening. So, you know, the one that does that. And he asks a question. He goes, did they do it? Did it happen by the hearing? Did it happen by you know, keeping the law? Or did it happen by the hearing of faith? Faith. I walked through the back doors. The worship team was practicing and um, there was something that came up in my heart, and, and I just knew right when it came to my heart that I'm not supposed to preach what I was going to preach. <laughs> so, hey, so you'll know when I know. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go to Psalms 129 and go to Hebrews chapter 11. I believe what I, what I thought I was going to minister was really good, and we will, maybe it was just for me. Uh, it was about legacy. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Yes. God had somebody in mind. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I study and seek the Lord and prepare for a service, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to find something that sounds good, looks good, makes me look good. I want what, what's God. I don't want a good idea. I don't want a good message. I want a God message. How about you? Amen. Hallelujah. So evidently, there's something on God's mind for us as a church family. I, hallelujah. Help me, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Psalms 129, it says, Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth. Let Israel now say... Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, yet they've not prevailed against me. Isn't that good to know? Yeah. So Israel, referring to God's people, who Israel used to be Jacob, but referring to the children of Israel that were in bondage, that Moses delivered out of bondage, that you and I, according to the New Testament, it says that you and I are the true Israel of God. And so, so this is representing the fallen state of man coming out of the bondage and stepping in to all the promises that God has for us. Do you know that there's promises available to you right now? Do you know whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, there's a promise for it? So many a time has the enemy afflicted me from my youth. That, that's the enemy wants to keep you down, keep you back, and keep you from fulfilling the assignment on your life. Now, as a church, 2024, from our founder, he declared this over us, that 2024 is a year of what? Progressing, advancing, experiencing promotion, and seeing our highest expectation fulfilled. Say, that's mine. So many a time has the enemy afflicted me from my youth, but then it says, then he says this, but it will not prevail against me. Not prevail. I declare it's not going to prevail against you. Amen. Hallelujah. For 55 years, we've been making winners in life as, as a ministry. Jerry Savelle Ministries International. And we were started in 2000. And, and, and Miss Carolyn heard the word of the Lord that said, there's hurting people in your community. I want you to love them for me. So the, the, what we're to bring is to bring the message and to bring the, the, the revelation and the insights to bring people out of, out of hurting and into health, out of poverty in, into prosperity, out, out of sickness into health. Out of brokenness into wholeness. Yeah. Out of depression in, into, into having a sound mind. Yeah. 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 All right. 
That, that's what we're called to do. And so you need to know that it is the heart of God to see you not be overcome, but it's the heart of God to, for you to overcome. Hallelujah. Say, I'm winning in life. I'm winning in life. Say this, I don't go by how I feel. I don't go how my, look, my life looks like right now. I'm prevailing. I'm, prevailing. I'm, winning. I'm winning. winning. Winning is what I do. People that live by faith, faith. we win. win. We prevail. We We overcome. overcome. That's just who I am. am. I'm a winner. winner. Hallelujah. 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 See, sometimes you you need to hear yourself say faith-filled words. Hallelujah. It goes in and it says, the plowers plowed on my back. They made long, they made their furrows long. Furrows are the, are the grooves that you see in a field, and, and those grooves represent two things. One, those grooves are for irrigation, or those grooves are where seeds planted. But you know what? This isn't God planting seeds. This is the enemy planting seeds. And the enemy wants to step on your back, put you in the ground, and plant you in places you were never meant to be planted. The enemy would love for you to stay planted in your addiction. The enemy would love for you to stay planted in your, in your thoughts of, of this, this poverty cycle that you've been in. The enemy would love for you to stay in this, in this life of anger and torment. And then it says this, the Lord is righteous. The Lord is righteous. He has cut in pieces the cords of the wicked. Meaning God is right and does right. The Lord is righteous. And the Lord's going to do something about what the enemy has done in your life. Say, I'm overcoming. overcoming. Say, I'm prevailing. prevailing. Hallelujah. Let's go to Hebrews 11. Yes, help us, Lord. (laughs) In all my years of opportunity having the honor to preach, as a word of faith minister. I'm, I'm a word of faith minister. Make no, no apologies about it. And I'm in good company because the Apostle Paul was a word of faith preacher. Amen. Romans 10, he says, the word of faith which we preach. Amen. Amen. It's not something that Oral Roberts, Kenneth Hagin, or, or Kenneth Copeland made up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you're not a word of faith preacher, what are you? I mean, if you're a Baptist preacher, then you should still be preaching the word of faith. I mean, it's not a de- denomination, okay? In all my years of teaching, I've, I've never preached on this scripture and, and unpacked this because probably I, I didn't really connect with it, but the Lord would, wants us to connect with it this morning. <laughs> Hebrews 11, verse 22. By faith. Say, by faith. faith. Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. Hallelujah. (laughs) Think, why, why was this? He just, he made, Tommy, he just made mention of the departing of the children of Israel. He made mention, the New King James says. The word mention here, he made mention. He made mention of the departure. This word made mention means to call to the mind. It means to rehearse and it means to remember. Faith. A couple weeks ago, I, I made a statement as I was preaching and don't know if I, it came out Clearly, but faith is not just living for my personal life, but faith is also living for a generation that I may never see. Your faith is more than just about you. Your faith is more than just about your stuff. 
Faith is about living for generations around you and generations to come. Here on his deathbed, he's about to die by faith Joseph when he was dying. He didn't want them to forget about something. You know, it's easy to forget the promises. It's easy to forget the things that you know you have a right to, but you can't see because it's been too long. I mean, here, after all, this is, this is the thing that was, they're going to be in bondage for 400 years to the Egyptians. And sometimes we can let go of our faith in seven days. But even on his dying bed, he made mention. He made mention of the departure of something he hasn't seen. Faith never lets go of the promise. If we're going to be people of faith, we can never let go of what God has spoken, what God has said. On his dying bed, all the things he could say, he's had to remind them of what God said. By faith, when he was dying, he made mention of the departure. Hallelujah. He wanted them to know, Pastor Phil, you're coming out. Yes. Yes. Don't, don't be moved by what you feel. Don't be moved by what you see. Don't be moved by the one that's got a whip to your back. Don't be, don't be moved by the, the things that you're seeing around you. Don't be moved by what the decisions Pharaoh is making. Don't be moved by what everyone else is saying. Don't be moved by this. Hey, there, there, there's going to be, you are going to see the promise fulfilled in your life. You're going to see the promise fulfilled over your children, over your grandchildren. You're going to see the promise fulfilled over your life, your ministry, your marriage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He made mention of their departure. And not only this, but he tells them, now this, this to me, I never saw this until the Lord said, I, this is what I want you to preach. When I walked in while they were practicing. And he said, he goes, make sure when you go out, you take my bones with you. He was so sure about their future. So sure that they were coming out. He was saying, don't leave me here because I want to be part of the departure. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 So it's like, so it's like someone that, hey, even when I'm in the grave, I'm going to celebrate with you. Even when you come out, I'm going to celebrate with you. Hallelujah. That is a whole nother level of faith. That's a whole nother level of faith. Hallelujah. That you can, you can go on your deathbed and you, you may feel in the natural that maybe it wasn't your time to go necessarily, but, but you're standing there. Hey, my children are going to see it. My grandchildren are going to see it. I'm going to see it. Hey, my community is going to be saved. My, my, the crowd is going to be saved. South Fort Worth is going to be touched. Hallelujah. 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 Pick up where I left off. Hallelujah. And make sure when you come out and this promise is fulfilled, hey, you're carrying me with you into the promised land. Hallelujah. Go to Genesis 15. Genesis 15. See, all faith has to be established on the word of God, not on your feelings. Faith is established on the, faith is established on the word, not your emotions. Faith is established on the word, not what grandma said. Faith is established on the word, not a religious preacher talked about. Faith is established on the word and the word of God only. Hallelujah. Because our feelings are fickle. Our emotions can control us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Genesis 15. Hmm. Verse 12. Now, when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. Then he said to Abram, know certainly that your descendants will be strangers. So what was the darkness? The darkness was realizing, hey, there's something coming ahead. 
And he tells them this. He goes, no, certainly that your descendants, say descendants. descendants. Hallelujah. They're going to be strangers in a land that is not theirs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And will serve them and they will afflict them 400 years. And also the nations whom they serve, I will judge afterwards. Now get this. They shall come out with great possessions. Now as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried a good old age. But in the fourth generation, say fourth generation. generation. They shall return here for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. So now Abraham is prophesying and decreeing the word of the Lord and saying, hey, there's something that's going to happen to God's people. There's going to be darkness. They're going to be strangers in a strange land. Hallelujah. But he said they're going to come out with great possessions. And after the fourth generation, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, they, so that means four generations is 400 years. So they consider a generation 100 years. So really, people, when we say boomers, we say Gen X's, we say Gen Z's, we say millennials. Really, we're all wrong because really we're through the same 100 years. And so really, we're all the same generation. It's all part of the enemy to keep people to live in bondage and bring division to the body of Christ. And they're going to, after the fourth generation, they're going to come back here. Let's go to Genesis 48, I think it is. 48. Thank you, Father. Uh, I think it's verse 20, maybe. Hallelujah. So, so he blessed them that day, saying, By you, Israel will bless, saying, May God make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. That's a whole other thing in that there. But, and thus he said, Ephraim before Manasseh. Then verse 21. Then Israel said to Joseph. Who? Joseph. Behold, I'm dying, but God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. Moreover, I've given to you one portion above your brothers, which I took from the hand of the Amorites with my sword. Hallelujah. So here once again we say, Then Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I'm dying, but God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. Faith is established in the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Go to Genesis 50. Hallelujah. Hold on. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Hold your place there and go to Exodus 13. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Verse 8. And you shall tell your sons in that day, saying, This is done because of what the Lord did for me when I came up from Egypt. It shall be as a sign to you and, to, and on your hand and as a memorial between, the eye, between your eyes that the Lord's law may be in your mouth for with a strong hand What is that? For the Lord's law may be in your mouth, for with a strong hand the Lord has brought you out of Egypt. You shall therefore keep this ordinance in the season year by year. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Now let's look at Exodus, uh, Genesis 50. Hallelujah. Verse 24. And Joseph said to his brethren, I'm dying, 
but God will surely visit you. What did Hebrews 11 say? When Joseph was dying, he made mention of the departure of Egypt and said, when you depart, take my bones with you. But what does he say here in verse 24 again? And Joseph said to his brethren, I'm dying, but God will, not might, not could, but will surely. Surely is matter of fact. Surely is you can bank on it. Hallelujah. I am dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of the land to a land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob. Hallelujah. Then Joseph took an oath from the children of Israel saying, God will surely visit you. Hallelujah. And you shall carry up my bones from here. Hallelujah. Man. Hallelujah. Faith. Hallelujah. Rests in the promises of God. Faith talks and continues talk to talk about the promises of God. Faith doesn't talk about what was, but faith talks about what is and what will be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So even in the midst of bondage, Joseph wasn't re rehearsing the fact that, oh, we're still in bondage. Yeah, you got, you know, I don't know, God might come through, God might not. I I'm not sure here. No, it was matter of fact. It was surely on his deathbed, he's saying, God is going to bring you out and take me with you. God will surely visit you. I think it's Psalms 8, verse 4. I believe it's a conversation in heaven with angels. And it's kind of like these angels are kind of like looking around at God and having a conversation with God and saying, saying, who is man that you're mindful of him? What is this, what is this thing that looks like a Philip that's been fashioned or Troy or Rudy? What, what is that? You know, because they hadn't seen one before. They're like, well, he's made in the image of God, but we're not quite sure what this thing is. What is, what is man what is this thing, man, that you would care for him and that you'd actually want to visit him? Whether you realize it or not, God wants to visit you. And God doesn't show up just to show up. God always shows up with a purpose. God always shows up to, for, an, for, for something in mind. God just doesn't show up to say, say, what you doing? Now, he may show up to do that, but ultimately, he, he wants you to get, he wants to get something to you. He wants to do something through you. God just doesn't visit just to visit. Because God has something on his mind for the children of God to walk in. Hallelujah. He made mention. I know I've said it, I'm saying it a lot, but he made mention of the departure out of Egypt. Yes. Hallelujah. Becky, can you put up Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 7? I think it might be in the King James. Zephaniah 2, verse 7. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. Hallelujah. That's us. They shall feed thereupon in the house of Ashkelon, shall they lie down in the evening, for the Lord their God shall visit them. Next verse. And turn away their captivity. So God will visit them, but it's with a purpose, is to turn away their captivity. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We are children of God. 
And if he wanted children, the children of Israel under an old covenant to come out of bondage, how much more would he want all men? I wish all men would be saved. All men. For God so loved the world, the world. Didn't say God so loved the Jew. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So Joseph's on his deathbed. He says, and God's going to surely visit you and God's going to do something about your captivity. I want you to know that God wants you to be free. God wants you to be prevailing. God doesn't want you overcome. He wants you overcoming. Hallelujah. And it is our role in this community is to bring people up to another level of thinking, another level of living, to be able to live life on a whole nother plane. Hallelujah. Repeat this with me. I'm going to live... Life on a whole nother level. I'm going to come up to God's way of seeing things. Hallelujah. I'm free because that's his desire for me. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 1. Go to, go to Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Luke 1, 68. Hallelujah. This was actually called the, the prophecy of Zechariah. He was filled with the Holy Spirit prophesying. So what does a prophet do? A prophet declares God's will. A prophet is letting us in on insight on what heaven sees. Okay? And here, this is being prophesied in verse 68, says, blessed is the Lord, the God of Israel. Remember, we talked at the beginning, many a time that, that, the, that the enemy has afflicted Israel from its youth, let Israel now say, many a times it afflicted Israel. So we know that this is a prophecy, this is a prophecy for the God that's over Israel. Blessed is the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. So once again, it wasn't just God visiting, but it was visiting with a purpose. It was a visited, visiting for the, the intention of redemption. It's, it's a visitation for redemption. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A visitation for redemption. Hallelujah. A visitation for a deliverance. It's a visitation to buy you and I off the auction block. It's a visitation to do something that it, it, was, a, it was the whole point that he came was to take off us what the enemy put on us. He had visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation uh, for us. In the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets and have been since the, since the world began, that we should be saved. So, so beginning since the world began was the whole fact that we should live victorious, that we should live saved. Verse 71, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers, to remember his holy covenant, the oath which we swore to our fathers Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in the holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest. For you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God with which the day spring on high has what visited us. But it wasn't just to visit to visit. What's the next verse say? What's this visitation to do? To give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into a way of peace. 
So what God was sending from heaven was a day spring on high, which was our Jesus to deliver us, to give light to the Gentiles and to guide our feet into a way of peace. So you could ultimately say the children of Israel coming out of bondage, not sick, not broke, with all the possessions walking out would be guiding their feet into a way of peace. What do you think? Hallelujah. 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 But when is the last time that you have been declaring your departure from what the enemy has done? Or are you celebrating your past defeats? Are you celebrating what God has already done or are you staying as the victim? Thank you, Lord. Where do you want me to go, Lord? Yeah. Go to Luke 4.18. Thank you, Father. You know, we go to this scripture a lot because I believe this is, this is the power of the gospel. That Jesus comes out of the wilderness. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach you could say, make mention of. <laughs> if I'm preaching something, I'm making mention of something. Yeah. But Jesus isn't just speaking something that's never been heard before. He's speaking a prophecy that was established that we see that he found in Isaiah 61. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me. He preached. He made mention. He made mention of a prophetic word that God had when he had you and I on his mind. And that word was the spirit of the Lord. The anointing is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to deliver the captives, open blind eyes, set at liberty them that were bruised. But then he says this, he closes it out by saying this, to preach the year of Jubilee. <laughs> to preach the year of Jubilee. <laughs> Hallelujah. The year of Jubilee is when all of God's people would get back everything they lost. So Jesus, when he closed out and it said he shut the book and it said he sat down and he said, this is, and this is the hearing in your ears and so much he was saying, this is finished. It's like, I'm it. <laughs> The, I am your jubilee. I am the day spring on high. I am the visitation. Hallelujah. The children of Israel, the, 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 the Jewish people, the, the priests, the, 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 the Sadducees, the Pharisees, as they were walking in, even towards the end of Jesus' ministry, he looks over the, the, of Jerusalem and he sees them, he weeps over it, and he, and he said, you missed the day of your visitation. Jesus said, I'm here. I am the visitation. I am the freedom. I am the deliverance. I am everything that you have need of and you miss the day of your visitation. Hallelujah. So today we make mention of the fact 
that I've departed out of sin. I've departed out of poverty. I've departed out of lack. You say, well, pastor, you, you don't understand. You don't, you don't, not my life, you don't see it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change the fact. You could say that the same thing Joseph could say, here he is about to die and saying he made mention of the departing of Israel. And by the way, take my bones with you. You need to start rehearsing and declaring what God has said about you, about your children, about your grandchildren, hallelujah, and generations after you. And you, but, and you keep saying, but at the same time, you're, but you don't, the, the point is, is faith isn't found in my butts. Yes. Faith is found in this is what God said, period. Yes. This is what God promised, period. This is what God said about me and my family, period. You can stay in your bondage if you want to, but I refuse to. You can stay broken if you want to, but I refuse to. You can stay mad at the world, but I refuse to. You continue to hold on to what people have done or doing to you, but you have to refuse to. And you say, Lord, I make mention of this. They, they did that, but Lord, this is what your word says. This is what your word says about my children. This is what your word says about my, my grandchildren. This is what your word says about my finances. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, I can't. I don't, I don't like, Lord, I don't like doing this because I don't even know the song, but I just... Please, this, don't, please don't throw stones. But I just, it just came up. I'm coming out <laughs> for the world to see. <laughs> don't, don't try to add any, any context, but we're coming out of bondage, okay? I no idea. <laughs> I don't even know what that song says. So, Lord... <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's, it's, it's our right. It's our right. Make mention of your departing of Israel. And you say, well, pastor, but, but what, if, what if I tell people? You need to tell people that you're free. And you're like, but, but you know, I'm still doing that. You need to tell people you're free. It's okay. It's okay. God called Abraham, Abraham before he was Abraham. He called those things that be not as though they were. Yes. You are father of many nations. Yes. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. <sighs> mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. 